that you're here tonight. We welcome you to First Baptist Church to a presentation we've been looking forward to for literally months, uh, Journey to the Manger. And the gang's all here and you're here and our internet crowd is watching on TV and we are so excited about this night. We're gonna journey through time from the prophecies of Isaiah all the way to the words of Jesus as he invites us to come and, and be part of his family. And so it's gonna be a night of looking for the baby in the manger, the, 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 the miracle of Bethlehem. And we're glad you're here as a part of this night. Uh, we, many of you are guests and you're here to support and, and represent a child or a grandchild or a great grandchild and we're glad you're, whatever reason brought you, we're glad you're here and you're always invited to be a part of our ministries here at First Baptist Church. I want to pray for us, and then following my prayer, I'll have you to stand with me, and uh, we'll sing some songs, some Christmas songs. But once, before I do that, once again, our saxophonist and our marimba player and our piano player, give them a hand. You are in for a treat tonight as our instrumentalist and our choir uh, presents to you this beautiful, miraculous story of Christmas. But it's not about them and it's not about us. It's about the Lord Jesus. And he's the one we've come to honor and to glorify and to celebrate this miraculous, magical time of year. Bow your heads with me as I pray. Father God, it's with great anticipation that we come before you tonight wanting to please you, wanting to thrill the throne of heaven with song, with drama, with narration, with all the things that will take place. But God, as I just said, we, we don't do this for our glory. We do it for yours. We, uh, we don't even do it for the amazement of the children who will sing or the soloists or the instrumentalists. We do it for your glory. And so God, we pray that tonight our hearts would be thrilled by what we see and hear, but our spirit, our soul would be taken to that magical place of Bethlehem when love came down as a gift from a loving father to his people so that we could know you and have a relationship with you. And I pray that that relationship just be made even sweeter tonight as we celebrate you through music. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna sing some songs now. Would you stand with us, please, as we prepare to sing?
you've come this evening to celebrate Christmas, your most cherished holiday, your most holy day. I never knew of Christmas, at least not the way you know it, but I did hear about it long before you did. My name is Isaiah, and I lived about 2,700 years ago. I spoke words that were given to me by God himself. Some of the most beautiful of those words had to do with your Christmas. I remember when the father said, The virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Another time his words came to me when he said, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God had promised a Messiah in the Garden of Eden. He suggested it again and again throughout scriptures. And now, finally, he gave us Messiah's name, Emmanuel. And he told us how Messiah would come as a child, a baby. Oh, how blessed you are that to you he is not just a promise yet to be fulfilled. For unto us a child is born. with us go and tell Emmanuel has come from heaven and his name will ever be the Prince of Peace the wonderful Counselor he's the great and mighty Lord bow before
You just heard from the great prophet Isaiah. You heard the words God gave him, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Through Isaiah, God told us Messiah would be born of a virgin. He would come as a child, his ministry would begin in Galilee. He would heal the sick and establish a future kingdom, and that kingdom would never end. God's people had every reason to hold their heads high and wait for the coming of Messiah. Then came the year 722 B.C. A vicious people came conquering, destroying, killing, capturing. Families were separated. Husbands never again saw their wives. And mothers never again saw their babies. God's people had no hope. When everything was so dark, God spoke again through Isaiah. He said there would be a glorious day when Messiah would come as a child and restore everything. He said this child would grow into a king like no other. Messiah would offer love and forgiveness. Sometimes, when life is hard, good news is hard to believe. It was especially hard for God's people, so they desperately, desperately cried out, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the
rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come again with us to people cried for him to come and they tried to get ready for him but it all seemed so impossible a year passed and no messiah then a hundred years passed then 500 years passed and still no messiah then to the most unlikely person in all of judah an angel came and told her she was going to have a baby well women have had babies before so what's the big deal the big deal was this woman had never been with a man. She was a young girl named Mary. The angel told her she had been chosen by God to be the mother of Messiah. He really was coming, and still it seemed so impossible. Mary's fiancé, Joseph, started to leave her, but an angel told him to stay, so they decided to walk this impossible road of God's plan. A virgin having a baby impossible messiah coming in the form of a baby impossible or was it Bye. 
Isaiah's promises may have seemed impossible, but as Mary and Joseph would learn over time, nothing is impossible with God. Messiah would be born of a virgin. She would lay him in a manger. Angels would sing of his glory. He would suffer as he made a way for all people to be forgiven, and he would save his people from their sin. Yes, Mary and Joseph saw impossible become reality. Bethlehem became the victory cry for this young couple and the victory cry for every person who has lived ever since. When this amazing gift of love was delivered in Bethlehem, everything changed. no way they could 
could see what lay before them They walked by faith into their destiny The road they faced, it was just too far a journey But something gave them reason to go Within their heart, they knew it from the start. Love will make a Bethlehem a place to start again and bring a new beginning. It's where the hope is waiting. Love will make a Just can't find a way. Love will make a Bethlehem. Yet still today, there's a yearning in our spirit that leads us to the holy child of grace. Our King, He's our hope born in a manger, and so we come and gather in this place. His love, His love invites us here, no matter where we've been. Even through the pain, there is a light within us that love will make, love will make. Only by His leading, only by His name, there is no doubt within us that love will make. And so it was true, Isaiah's promise 740 years ago 
had happened. Bethlehem had delivered to the world a child, yes, but a king, a king who was a child, Messiah, Messiah who was a baby. Royalty was living among us. He was lying in a manger. The message of the angel to a group of shepherds was frightening and yet at the same time thrilling beyond speech. And after hearing that message, there was only one thing those shepherds could do. They ran to the manger. shepherds but it didn't stop there far away the magi of the east were made aware of this miracle the one born king of the Jews and with these mysterious visitors began another beautiful part of worship what do you give the king of kings well surely you give him your best
the little baby boy was first cradled by the rough and worn hands of a carpenter. Hands that had known the splendors of wood were holding the splendors of heaven. Joseph was a simple man holding infinity, a limited earthly father caring for the limitless son of God. The child's mother was a maiden so fair and humble. Mary embodied what God looks for in a person where he will take residence, the willingness to give him her whole heart. For the things God can do with an unqualified invitation goes beyond human understanding. He specializes in the miraculous and what a miracle Jesus was. common people, and Jesus came in an ordinary, common way. But the life he lived and the life he calls us to is anything but ordinary. In the 
same way that Jesus offered that meal to his disciples, he offers it to anyone who will trust in him. So tonight, come and eat and drink and trust him by coming to his table. Hopefully, as you came in tonight, you received one of these communion cups. If you'll very carefully peel the top layer off of that cup, revealing the wafer beneath, take and eat. This represents the body of Christ. Is another little layer. Very carefully take and peel that off. You'll find the juice, which represents the blood of Christ. Take and drink. Tonight we're invited to his table. The Christmas story didn't stop at the manger, it didn't stop at that stable with Mary and Joseph. It didn't even stop with the shepherds or the wise men. The Christmas story continues tonight as we're invited to his table because he gave us his best and asks us to give him our best, which is our lives. My prayer is that tonight you have come to his table, enjoyed his best, given him your best, and keep living the Christmas story. God bless you. We thank you for being a part of this presentation. As I've said so many times, we've been looking forward to this for so long, for months, and there are no telling how many hours of preparation have gone into this night. Uh, it would be impossible, and hopefully you received a program as you came in. I'll not try to call out specific names because I would leave somebody out and get myself in trouble. But there was so much that went on to make tonight possible from people running sound and lights and video and computer and the, the internet feed, uh, getting together all of these, no telling how many costumes of the children and the, the uh, choir, uh, working with the children. Would you give these behind the scenes people a round of applause? And then I believe, I'm a little biased after all these years, but I believed that uh, not even, I started to say for a church our size, I would compare to a church much larger, our instrumentalist. Would you give them a round of applause? <laughs> Y'all is good. And then I believe one of the best choirs you'll find anywhere around. Thank them for their singing. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. And tonight is a night of mixed emotions as we're excited about doing this. But uh, there's a little bit of a downside, and that is that tonight, our minister of music for 13 plus years, uh, Sissy Major, is retiring. And actually, tomorrow, uh, we made her, we, we told her she had to come back and help clean up. But, uh, but after tomorrow, she will be retired. Would you please thank her for tonight? You can keep standing, we're about to dismiss. Uh, when you're dismissed, when we say our final amen, you're invited to the fellowship hall. For those of you who are our guests, obviously you can't go out this way, so if you'll go out these doors, be very patient, because there's a lot of us, uh, but uh, make your way, just follow the crowd. Somebody that goes to church here will help you find your way to our fellowship hall, where uh, we will have a whole bunch of finger food and dips and cookies and till it, till it wears out, and we'll eat it all. And uh, so you're invited to be a part of that. Again, to our guests, thanks for making this night so special. Uh, if you don't have a church home here in the Quitman, Clark County area, then uh, as I said, I'm biased, but I don't believe you'll find a better uh, church 
nicer, more loving people. And so we invite you, if you don't have a church, we we're not out to steal any church members, but if you don't have a church uh, in this area, we want you in church. We want your children in church, and we invite you to First Baptist Church. Uh, let me pray for us one last time, and we'll make our way to the fellowship hall. Let's pray. Holy God, it's with just incredible thanksgiving that we come to you tonight uh, saying thank you for all of the work that's gone into tonight for a great night of celebration, yes, but for the Christmas story. We thank you, God, that, that through Isaiah you told us that you were giving your son to us uh, as a wonderful counselor and a mighty God and everlasting father and a prince of peace. Thank you, Father, that through all those years uh, we waited and Messiah came as that little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. But, oh, God, thank you that it didn't stop there. Thank you that Christmas didn't end 2,000 years ago, that tonight you invite us to your table. You invite us to enjoy the body you gave, the blood you bled for our salvation for our eternal life, for forgiveness and mercy and grace. And God, we thank you for that tonight. Oh, Father, I pray that not one person here tonight would miss out on the Christmas message that you loved us so much that you sent your only son so we could live. Thank you for that. God, I pray we would embody that and embrace that and live out that message everywhere we go for the rest of our lives. God, we thank you for all that participated tonight and these who came. Thank you for Sissy and her leadership. And God, we pray that uh, our lives would honor you no matter where we go, no matter what we do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Make your way to the fellowship hall.